Hi, um, this week I want to talk a little bit about the elements of a short story or any type of fiction you'll be writing this time. Um, I'll refer to short stories throughout this because I anticipate that's what most of you will be writing, but it is possible. Um, I know a couple of you have talked about wanting to write novels. Um, so it is possible that you could take this and instead of just writing a short story, you could write the beginning or part of a larger work. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay, and this PowerPoint will also be available in today's folder or this week's folder. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about the conventions of a short story, what a short story is, and what typically are part of most short stories. Um, some of this will refer to stuff that is common in all stories. Some of it will refer to elements that are only part of certain types of stories. And we'll talk about that more as we go along. So before we get started, let's talk about what a short story is. Um, and this definition came from AmericanLiterature.com or AboutAmericanLiterature.com, which is a really good resource for those of you who are trying to figure out terminology or elements of any sort of writing. And while it's from a site that talks about American literature, this uh, these same conventions or the same definition would apply for stories written from other cultures as well. So basically, it's fully developed, but it's shorter than a novel. Um, it's a full story. It has a beginning, middle, and end usually, but it's not quite book length. Um, it can be anything from flash, which is around 500 words, up to um, slightly shorter than a book. So um, the length is up to you. For this uh, class, we'll probably be looking at stories that are around five pages or so, maybe a little less, maybe a little more, depending on the type of story you're telling. Um, there is an option to write flash fiction, which we'll talk about a little bit more when we talk to our um, featured writers this round. Um, and if you're going to write flash fiction, you might have to write a couple stories. But the importance is no matter what kind you're writing, it needs to be fully developed. Um, if you're writing something that's a section of a novel, then you want to at least have a synopsis of what's going to happen next. And that's a blank slide that I'll have to delete. Let's talk about now types of short stories or genres um, of short stories. Um, all of the material from this section is coming from this book, Writing Fiction. I think this is the seventh, yeah, the seventh edition, which is by Janet Burroway. Um, if you can find a used copy of this and you're interested in fiction, I would highly recommend it. It's usually really pricey and they release new editions for very little reason, um, which is why I didn't assign anything by Burroway for this class, but it is worth looking at as far as how much it encompasses fiction writing. So I would highly recommend it, but try to find an old uh, edition used. Anyway, let's talk about mainstream and literary fiction, first of all. Um, mainstream fiction has broad appeal as situations and emotions that tend to interest a large number of readers in the culture that it's targeted to. Um, these are the books that you see in the store, let's say if you're at Kroger or Meyer or Target and you go through the book section. Um, these are the types of novels that are written for a general audience. They don't typically refer to, um, they're not typically genre, although some are uh, more like fantasy or horror, although sometimes they are. And they're typically written to entertain. I think the most popular author right now of mainstream fiction, or at least um, realistic mainstream fiction that I've seen is, um, I can't remember his name. He wrote, he wrote a man called Ove, Frederick Bachman. Um, he's really wonderful. Sometimes mainstream fiction is literary, but not always. It can be any genre. And what separates literary fiction from non-literary fiction is that it tends to be very character driven over plot and it focuses on language use and the use of elements of writing to tell an engaging story. 
Frederick Buckman's pieces, uh, novels typically are literary as well. Then of course we have romance. These are love stories. They can be formulaic, but they're not always formulaic. Um, a lot of Harlequin romances follow the same type of plot. Um, heroine has something bad that happens. Hero comes and saves her. They fall in love and live happily ever after. Um, there's also some really interesting uh, romance novels in the LGBTQ genre. Um, in some of the historical novels that we look at or classic literature that we look at, it falls in a romance. Things like Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice, although it's not just a romance novel, it's also social satire. Um, and a lot of books will have an element of romance without being a romance book or a romance story. Um, but if romance or the love story is central to the plot, then it is a romance novel or story. Mystery, of course, is like the whodunit. You're trying to find out who did something or who caused something or what caused something along with a detective or an investigator. These are things like Sherlock Holmes. Then you have science fiction. Um, movies would be like Star Trek um, or uh, books by like Isaac Asimov or Frankenstein. They deal with technology, science, or space. Usually they're futuristic, but not always. And they deal with either some ambivalence over technology, so they can be like a warning about what happens if we let it go too far. Um, thinking of like the series Black Mirror on Netflix, or it can be some hopefulness around it. Like this is what we can solve through technology. And sometimes they're, there's like this in-between story as well. Um, Octavia Butler is probably the best author that I can think of who writes this, who, who did write this. She's unfortunately deceased now. Um, she deals with time travel sometimes with her novel, um, with one of her novels that deals with um, slavery and traveling between here, between slave, slavery times and then current times. And then she also deals with more futuristic in the Lilith uh, trilogy. Sometimes there's uh, the author of science fiction will need to do some research. They are typically scientifically sound, um, at least based on what we know about technology now. You have fantasy, which is like science fiction, but it uses magic and other fantasy elements instead of science. It's not usually in the future. Usually it deals with faraway lands um, historical time periods, there may be an element of magical powers, unicorns, um, dragons, things like the Game of Thrones series by George R. R. Martin or Harry Potter are our most common types of fiction right now. Or fantasy fiction, sorry. Then you have horror, which can borrow from science fiction, it can borrow from fantasy, or it can be more realistic, but there's an element of danger and you have main characters who have to fight against some sort of evil or wrong to save themselves or save society or save others. Um, others like Stephen King, of course, are the most common um, types of horror. And they often deal with an allegory of the worst of humanity or it can serve as a danger, a warning of what could happen. You have magical realism, which focuses on reality and real life but it introduces elements of magic or fantasy. There may be a character who um, you're not sure if they're human or not. There may be a character who comes in to kind of like save the day or um, there may, it may be an allegory of treating humanity the way that you, they should be treated. Like um, you walk past a homeless man on the street and people keep walking past him and the person who feeds him um, notices that he has wings those kinds of things. Of course, there are many more genres than that. Those are just some of the main overview ones. So let's look at the basics of what a short story should have. First, you need to have your setting. This is where and when something takes place. Is it in our time period? Is it in the past? Is it in the future? Um, when did it happen? And also, where did it happen? 
as far as the exact locale, um, is it rural, is it urban, is it in space, is it in a castle? Um, what are the financial situations of the main characters and how do we know that? And that unfolds through the details of a story. You can see where something takes place typically. Regardless of the type of story you write, whether it's flash fiction or longer fiction, it needs to have um, some heavy details to let your readers know. Basically, the setting serves as an anchor. It lets your readers know where in time and place they are. Um, and it makes your story feel more believable. Even though it's fiction, you want your readers to at least believe in what you're saying. Do you have character? Of course, these are the beings, I would say people, but sometimes there are really good stories that don't involve people. Um, but they're the beings in a story that are impacted by the plot or events of the story. There's usually a main character or a protagonist who um, has to deal with the events of the story and everything typically revolves around that story and an antagonist who works against the main character. Um, there are exceptions to this. If you've read A Song, and I, a Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin, where, uh, which is where the Game of Thrones television series is taken from, um, chapters have, each chapter is focused on a different character. So the events of the story impact a lot of characters equally in different ways. Um, but usually, at least for short stories, you'll have a main character. And then you have other characters who interact with that main character. And then you have an antagonist, one of those is usually an antagonist who works against the main character. Plot are the events of a story. It usually begins with a problem and ends with a solution. Um, sometimes the solution isn't a neat solution. It can just be, um, this is the end and this is where we are right now. You'll have an opening or an exposition that lets your reader know what's going on. Then you'll have an inciting moment or an initial conflict, an element of this is what this main character is fighting against. You have some rising action or these are the events that are leading to this climax, which is the most exciting scene of a story. Uh, the climax is typically where um, the protagonist has to deal or battle against um, whatever the um, main event or the main problem is. Then you have the falling action, which is it wrapping up and the resolution, which is the end of the story. Of course, any plot has to have an element of conflict. Conflict is necessary for an effective story. Um, it gives the why to these events. Why are these things happening? Why is it impacting the main character? And why is it important? Sometimes it's a character versus another character can be a character versus nature, a survival story, versus themselves where they're trying to overcome something or battle something internally. They can be against technology, it can be against society, anything like that, but there needs to be a central conflict to your story. And then you have theme. What is the underlying unifying element of this story. Um, throughout all of the events, what do they relate to? Why are you writing the story and what do you want your readers to get out of it? Um, there can be occasionally multiple themes, but one is usually predominant. Um, but you want to figure out what message am I trying to get across? And then you have the narrator and the point of view. Who is telling the story and how much do they know about the story? Is the main character um, telling the story? In which case, they probably only know as much as what's going on right now. And they tell it from an I perspective. Then you have a first person outside character um, where you have a narrator who's a character in the story, but he's not really integral to the elements of the story. My favorite novel the Book Thief is written by Marcus Zusak, and it's a novel about the Holocaust. And while the main character is this girl, Liesel, who is in foster care, um, the narrator of the story is death, like as a being. And he is an intrusive narrator, so he butts into the story to tell a little bit about his perspective. And he kind of lets the readers know what's going to happen before um, the main characters do. And then you could have a third person narrator who is either not a character or you're not sure who they are. 
um, and they may know limited things. They may know only know what that what the protagonist knows, or they may know everything that's going to happen. This is basically how you decide what perspective to tell your story from, and how much do you want your readers to know before um, the main character finds things out. Sometimes letting them know that bad things are going to happen before the main character does can heighten some tension. Or, but sometimes it can also serve as a disservice because it can give too much of the story away. So it can be a hard balance to strike. I usually play around with different points of views when I'm trying to tell a story. Um, I'll think of my theme and some of my main plot elements first, and then I'll play with the point of view and figure out where I think it works best. And that's it. I know this is a very quick overview, but I like to keep these videos short because I know sitting in front of a TV or a computer screen or a phone screen or however you're watching this can be very frustrating and a little tiring. Um, you'll have some reading this week that will go a little bit in, more in depth with some of these elements. Um, and then you'll look at some example stories. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, please let me know. And I look forward to reading your writing this week. Have a wonderful week and happy writing.